Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and today I thought we would um, have a look at the floppy disk drives out of the uh, Mac Classics. Uh, I've got both drives out of both computers here. Um, this drive actually does work. Um, you can boot the Mac off it and everything, and read, write, format disks. It seems to work fine. It's just it's absolutely filthy. Uh, this is the um, drive from the other the other Mac Classic, actually the um, the second Classic that we um, got, and it tries to read discs. It, it sort of you know, it can occasionally when you put a disc in, it'll come up with the um, directory. You can click on it, you can see the directory structure. But when you try and load anything, it just comes up with a disc error. So I'm hoping it's just um, dirty heads on it and uh, a bit of dry grease. Like I said this one does actually still function brilliantly. Both of them, the auto eject mechanisms, uh, work fine, or at least uh, as far as I can see, work fine. This will be the first time I've ever really looked at one of these um, disk drives that's got like an auto eject mechanism on it. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to um, what I'm going to come across. Like I said, I've never worked on um, these uh, Macintosh drives before um, at all, really. Um, I mean, I've worked on Apple II drives and some and things like that, but they're a completely different animal. Uh, we'll get rid of this hard drive to start with. This is another dead, um, dead hard drive. I did try this um, as a second hard, a secondary hard drive on uh, my other Mac on my um, LC, and um, that can't see it. Uh, I've tried um, some hard drive. Um, recognition software. Um, I've got System 6 and System 7 on floppy disk now. Um, I will be doing a video um, as soon as I can get um, get it sorted out showing how I actually made those two um, sets of disks using the uh, Bridge PC and Omniflop. Because I know someone was asking about um, how I did that with their mother disks so we'll do a quick video um, on how I do, do how I did that and um, made my System um, 6 and 7 disks. Right, but um, I've tried the util the um, hard drive utilities on both System Six and System Seven, and nothing can see this hard drive. So it's a, probably an electronic fault on it. Actually, I mean there may be something we can do with it at a later date. But it's um, well, it's a Quantum Pro drive. Um, I do know from watching a few videos. Um, I think Retro Gamer VX did one. Um, some of these early quantum drives do have an issue. Um, basically, what happens with them? Inside, you've got the um, the head on um, an actuator that swings around, obviously, and moves across the disc like that. And there's like a little rubber bumper at the end of um, the head's travel to stop the head. Well, I think it's basically to stop the head whacking into the metal bit at the end, so it has a little bit of rubber around it, just to act as like a rubber bumper. And unfortunately, what's happened is it's this, it must be the same type of rubber as rubber drive belts are made out of, because it's it turns to goo inside the um, hard drive, and as the head moves across, at some point it hits it and it glues the head in position, and the head can't move anymore. Now I don't think that's the fault on this particular drive because the computer is not recognising it as a hard drive, and if that was the fault, I think the BIOS in the um, hard drive would still be working it would still actually come up on the SCSI bus as a hard drive just with errors you know you just wouldn't be able to read or write but it's it's not even showing up as a SCSI device so I have a feeling that it's a fault um, on the main board I mean it could still have that sticky um, head issue as well but we'll put that away for uh, looking at in the future as well the other hard drives, I think I do have at least one hard drive I can use in the Mac Classic that we do end up um, repairing. Um, right, we've got a fair bit of rust on this, um, what I presume is what, like the hard drive carriage, but the other one we've got is absolutely fine, so we'll, although we'll, I, don't, I actually don't know which drive we're going to end up using to be fair, because if this drive is just dirty and it looks like it's in better condition, we might use that one this might be the better drive and we'll just swap the um, cases over I mean that will clean off, I will give that a clean uh, but we'll use the best, what we're doing here basically is we're going to make as good a Mac Classic out of the two I've got as we can without going, um, going mad on it 
you say they're not bothering with retro brides or anything like that. Actually, the case on the um, the original one that I had is not bad at all. It's not really very yellowed. Um, it's a lot more yellowed on the second Mac Classic, but so that one fortunately had a um, saveable um, logic board in it. It's absolutely, look at this here. This is that's just fluff and muck. We look here. Look. So amazingly, this the dirtiest one of the drives is the one that actually works. Take that out. Right. I'm guessing we can just lift this up and that'll. No. Do we slide it out forwards? Yeah, there we go. I have to kind of like fiddle that wire out. There we are. Ooh, that does look a bit grim. But there is the first. Like I said, this this mechanism works. There's um, there's nothing wrong with this at all, apart from it is filthy. Dear me, that's dirty. Let's get some Q-tips on that. I'll get you zoomed in a bit. You're going to get to see it again anyway, because we're going to have a go, and we'll probably do both. But. And then we'll have a play with them in a, um, a Mac and make sure that they're working. But this is full of fluff. Let's get, in, let's get a uh, Q-tip. We'll just make a start. This is the computer. You remember me saying that the um, the motherboard had like a horrible film everywhere. And that probably could be what um, actually saved it from all the um, capacitor leakage. Uh, this drive's the same. It's like got an oily film everywhere so I wonder where this um, Mac was used look it's like a sticky like a sticky oily film all I was blaming um, the user for being a smoker but I don't think that's it actually I have a feeling it's where this uh, where this computer was um, used possibly in like an industrial environment somewhere or engineering, perhaps an engineering works or um, something like that. It's a shame that the hard drive's um, dead on it, cause that, so we can't get any um, clues off um, clues off the hard drive. But no, the whole thing seems to be have like this this residue on it. The other drive um, out of the other Mac came out of the school, so um, that might be a bit better. Let's try a little bit of isoprop on here, see if that will help us lift this this grease. It's pretty revolting, actually. It is all coming off. Yeah, it's look, it's just like it was on the uh, main board. presume this unit here is to do with the um, auto eject I don't know very much about these drives I don't really want to like completely disassemble it if I don't have to and it doesn't feel like it's like really gummed up or anything I mean we might add a little bit of grease to a few um, a few spots but it honestly doesn't feel all that um, gummed up. What we might do is we'll just go in and we'll give the heads a quick going over. I've got to say they don't look too terrible actually the heads. But this is the drive that well, so this is the drive that works. Very very gentle doing that top head. It's a tricky one to do that. You don't whatever you do don't bend as you can see me um, lifting that up don't try and force that head right up because you will do damage you just want to lift it just enough like this so you can get your q-tip in and very 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 gently clean that head not really a lot's come off there I think they were pretty clean actually let's let that go back down you don't want to uh, risk doing any damage there but even the runners, 
like here on these runners that usually yeah they've got a film of oil on them they've not got any like, nasty hardened grease like you normally find in um, in old disk drives I, I can only presume it's down to the environment this uh, this drive was um, used in so this oily film is everywhere on it but Amazingly, it seems to have completely protected everything. Listen, even the uh, rail there, which is usually a bit gummed up, it looks in fine, fine order. Um, the heads, the little worm drive down there, that's usually all full of um, gummed up grease. That's not. I mean, we're probably um, doing it not a. Well, I don't know. We need to get some of this crud off it, but... Oh, again, swap over to another Q-tip. I mean, if it hadn't been in such an environment, with the amount of rust that was like on the chassis and what have you, just from moisture, like I have a feeling it might have been kept in a cellar or something like that or an outbuilding or something for some time um, God knows what state things like this would have been in it really seems to have uh, preserved it quite a lot I'm trying to clean all these bits up Yeah, even when I rub over that circuit board there, this is oily films just coming off. Oh, even more. Well, what I have got to say as well is these are incredibly heavily built drives. They're on like um, a cast aluminium um, sub chassis under there that's what you can just see at the front there that seems to go all the way through and that's what takes the uh, drive motor for the disc and everything else seems to be bolted onto that it's like really really well engineered I mean it is a Sony unit it's not a cheap um, it's not a cheap unit but they were um, they were definitely going to town with the floppy drives Apple um, at this stage anyway that's like I say it's incredibly nicely engineered that I want to be a little bit careful I don't go mad and um, upset any of this mechanism because I found it's not a mechanism I'm at all familiar with. What I will do is I will get a little bit of spray grease on as um, soon as I can find what I've done with my spray grease. I'll get a little bit of that on um, a piece of paper and we can use that just to put a few little bits of lubricant um, here, just here and there. We want to be really sparing with it though. We don't want to go mad with um, lubricating it all. Let me just see if I can find what I've done with the grease now. Where has it gone? I must have moved it. Um, what's that there? That's freezer sprite. That's things being knocked everywhere. Uh, I'm just going to have to pause you for a second, folks, until I um, locate what I've done with my um, grease. So, uh, back in a sec. Well that took longer to find than it should have. Then I remembered I were having problems with um, the central locking on my car the other day. And I uh, took it down to spray the uh, spray the lock barrel on the car. And I must have never bothered bringing it back up here. But it was sat on the uh, sat on the table in the garage. And anyway, we've got a bit of a uh, bit of scrap cardboard. And um, never obviously you don't want to put the nozzle on here and spray it into the disc drive because you just get far too much grease coming out. So what I do, piece of cardboard, you have to be a bit careful, but I just spray, spray a little bit on a piece of cardboard like that, and use a cocktail stick. And all I do, take a bit of the grease and just take it and put it exactly where it's needed so a little bit on the a little bit on the disc's worm drive just like that and you don't, doesn't need very much 
and then the next time that the head seeks backwards and forwards. Look, so this was really quite clean. I don't know if we're going to find the same in the um, in the other drive. I have a feeling it's that oily film that the whole of the inside of the computer was um, coated in. Certainly the motherboard and all the inside of this disk drive has actually uh, really preserved it. Well, uh, no, that's probably a little bit too much. Just a little tiny bit on the um, on the runner there. A little bit like that. Literally, I've just put a little bit down there on the um, on the runner. I so there's a little bit on the worm drive on the other side there. Now I'm just going to put a little bit. I, mean, I don't think there was any here originally, but it's not going to do any harm. On just on these moving surfaces. That's not dirt that you can see on the um, drive there. That's just a, like a little bit of uh, what's been left up left by that oil it won't come off and I'm not too concerned about it it's not corrosion it's not dirt so I'm just going to put a tiny bit on some of these surfaces that move and around here I didn't have any on originally but I have a feeling it won't do any harm just to a little bit of grease on any of these places, like I said, but we know it's definitely um, a moving, a moving part of the drive. There we go. And there's some rollers down here that just help when the um, disc drops in. I think a little bit of um, a little bit of grease on them would certainly help, like that. I think that's about it. To be fair. There's another roller there that could do with a little bit on it. And I think there's one on this side. Just in there. We'll put a little bit on there as well, like that. And that should be enough. So you don't want to go mad with the um with the greasing on these things, or you're going to likely to cause um cause more problems than you fix. I'll stick that one to one side now. We'll stick that. We'll put that up there out of the way. And we'll bring in um, we'll bring in drive number two. Now this is the one that didn't read. Like I said, it did a good attempt to read him, but um, he didn't actually get there and fully read the disc. So let's um, let's crack on with this one. Same again. We'll just whip the we'll whip the screws out. There we go, that's the drive out. Just ease that forwards, and I think the drive just pum, comes out the front. There we go. Same as the other one. As you can see, the drives are identical. They are actually exactly the same um, part number. So it's not as though they've used a different drive or anything. Let's spin that round. And it looks very much the same, um, 90.10.05, and that one is 91.4.25, um, I think that says, so that's 1991.4th um, month, 25th week, 1990.10th month, 5th week. <coughs> so, this drive is um, slightly older, I don't think that really makes any difference though doesn't have that oily greasy film on it that, that um, the first drive we looked at did. I'm wondering whether um, a quick grease and a quick clean of the heads and that's possibly all that this one's going to need. I don't think it's going to need quite the rigorous uh, scrubbing that the other one did. It's not got that little bit of dust on it. That's about it. It's got a little bit of like surface. I mean you can see the difference there where it's that's just fluff that it's picked up. It's not like that horrible black grease that we had on the um, had on the other drive. It's quite clean in here. That's all really nice and free. So 
have a look at the runners and everything. In fact, even the runners don't look bad. They don't look all um, greased and gunked up like you see in a lot of um, on a lot of floppy drives. I wonder if this literally is just going to need a um, a quick head clean, a re a little bit of a lube on there and there, and that might be all it needs. I think we've got really lucky with these um, Apple drives. They don't look in a tall bad condition actually. We'll uh, get a little bit of isoprop on the cotton bud, and again, just like I did on the other drive, I've got to very gently lift the head like that just far enough that you can actually get your um, get your cotton bud in and then it's super super caref careful just cleaning Don't look real, nothing really dirty has come off that, you know. Don't look terribly dirty. Let's have a look at the... Tiny little bit of um, dirt has come off that top head there. But not really huge amount. Possibly a tiny little bit of muck off there, but not not tons and tons. We'll give them a quick dry with the other side. That head does look nice and shiny. Let's do the top one there. The top one's always the harder one to do. can't really see it, you have to do it just by looking looking at the side of it rather than down on it like you can with the um, bottom head. But there we go, that feels that feels okay. So let's uh, let's just try just um, adding a bit of grease to this one. So we'll grease on the worm drive there. It doesn't look it's not full and packed full of all grease like you usually find. That's what's um, perplexing me. Perhaps we should just go in and give it a quick wipe over with um, the cotton bud, but well, there is a bit coming off actually. Yes, yeah, there's a bit, a bit of man manky grease coming off it, but I've seen far worse. There we go. Like I say, it has. There is a fair bit there, but it's not, not terrible, terrible. The runner doesn't look like it's bad at all. The runner looks really quite uh, with a rub, rub on it there and then bring it out. It's, there's nothing coming off it at all. don't think that's really very dirty. Just gently move the heads back so we can get in a bit further. But no, that's really not coming dirty at all so um, I'm quite quite pleased with that to be honest. That doesn't look bad. Right, we'll add a little bit of extra grease in a few few uh, places and we'll see how these work. And again just get a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the spray grease onto a um, piece of cardboard. And we'll just add it to the drive down there, just like that. Don't need much, and again we'll add a little bit to the runner on this side, but it doesn't need much at all. Just a little bit. Try not to get it on anything you don't want it on. So I can just slide that forwards a little bit. There we go. 
Let's get a little bit onto that. Basically, a little bit onto the rung. So when it moves backwards and forwards, it'll it'll distribute it out and spread it out along the uh, along the shaft. I've got a little bit on the uh, data, the um, head top head cable there, but I'm actually get it off. Right there we go. So that's some on that runner on that side, and that's some on the drive on that side. I think what we'll do is we'll just use, like we did on the other one, uh, we'll just use a bit on a few of these little um, bits that we now move. Like these little runners here that the, um, the little runners here and there that when you put the disc in it slides down um, using them. So a little bit of grease on them is not going to go amiss. Not much. Like I say, you don't want to go mad with the grease and you just want to add a little bit where it looks like it's going to need it there I'm just going to do like I did on the other drive just add a little bit to these sliding not a lot just a tiny little bit to these sliding points I've been told that the, uh, oh, the eject mechanisms are really prone to failure on these but so far, all the Macs I've got where I've actually got the drive functioning to enough to that you can eject a disc, all the eject mechanisms so far have worked. I believe it's a little plastic cog in there that breaks up, it's not a, a stable plastic and it crumbles over time. And there are replacements you can get, there are various people that print or make new um, cogs and you can get a replacement for it. But so far that's not been a problem I've, um, I've run into. Right, possibly just a tiny, tiny touch. Where did we put some last time? On there. I mean, there's possibly some places you don't want any grease on um, on a drive, but a bit like on a record player decks, where there's certain places you do not add grease to. That should do. Right, so we've got our two um, our two greased up and um, cleaned mechs there. Obviously I've not done anything with the electronics on them um, so far. We have got some electrolytic capacitors on here. But I don't actually think that those are um, an issue. A little bit of fluff there that I've missed. There we go. I don't actually think those are the um, issue at all. Um, we could possibly heat the iron up and do a quick smell test on them. But like I, said, I think it was possibly just... Um, well we knew that drive worked. It could just be that it needed the heads a bit of a clean on them and what have you, but we'll uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what we'll do, I'm going to just quickly uh, reassemble these back into the case, and I'll drag I'll drag the um, classic out, and we can um, just have a quick test and see if um, we've made a difference, whether this one still reads, and whether we've actually got um, this one to um, read as well. So, uh, back in a sec. Right, we're back, and I've got the Mac Classic in. This is basically this is the uh, first Mac Classic that I got that I worked on all those years ago, but with the um, digital board out of the second Mac Classic that we got because basically this has just got a slightly better uh, cosmetic condition. That's the only reason that I've um, gone this way, and we've got the um, chassis work that we um, repaired and painted up in the previous video, and if you can see, really. I don't think we did a bad job on that. I mean, it's not very noticeable, is it? It doesn't scream out great big um, bit of rust damage. And so as compared with the other Mac Classic, where there's a lot of just surface rust everywhere, and really to make it look as good, we'd have had to spray the entire um, chassis just with like a silver paint or something to really make it look as good as this, because this was only really that bit of damage there. And if we look on the inside, I don't know if you can make it out, but if you look in there, you can't tell at all that um, I've had to repaint it. I'm really quite pleased with that. Anyway, what we will do is we'll take one of these um, floppy drives. Let's take let's take this one to start with. This is the second drive that um, we worked on, the one that was not re reading discs properly. Uh, we'll pop out. We'll pop the RAM expansion out just because it makes life a little bit easier for getting the um, drive in. So I think I'll probably I will end up using the other drive. I have swapped the cages over, so this drive is in the uh, cage that's slightly more rusty. Um, 
the other drive, which was the drive that worked before we started any of this, I've put in the um, cage that hasn't got um, any of that rust on it. I, I did spend just five, ten minutes off camera with my um, little um, steel pen. This little, um, it's basically I have a fiberglass one, I have a brass one, and a steel one. I used my little steel one there and just got the most of the um, surface corrosion off that, just to make it that look that little bit um, that little bit better. Let's grab um, let's grab a keyboard and um, a rodent. Right there we are. In fact, we use the System Six disc, so we don't even have to bother putting the um, RAM expansion back in because that'll run quite ha happily on a. Um, a Mac with only one meg of RAM in it, so we won't bother putting the expansion back in for now because all we're really doing is just testing whether the disk drive's um, gonna work. Plug that in there, plug some power into it. Oops. Like that. Right, so we've got the disk drive in the computer, we've got a mouse and keyboard and everything set up. And get my Mac, uh, my Mac floppies, and in here I've got. Yeah, we want that's seven point oh one. We've got six point oh eight here. Disc one and disc two. We only need disc one. And let's see if I've got anything else. We can just uh, quick. Ah, I've got a game there as well. We can try and um, see if that'll load as well. Right. So let's power up the Mac. Carefully, because I'm going around the back of it here. There we go. We got a beep from the Mac. It is nice and quiet without a hard drive um, chugging away in it. And then it should come up and ask us for a disc in a second. There we go, it's asking us for a floppy. Let's try Macintosh um, OS um, 6.08. We've got a happy smiley Mac. Let's see if it's going to load. Are you going to fully load up? Let's see. Remember, this was the floppy drive that wasn't. Um, wasn't working before it would get part way through trying to load something and then um, it just come up with a disk error. Let's see what it's going to do. Are you going to load? There we go. Booted into system. And that's the drive that wasn't um all seems to be working. Like I said, that was the drive that wasn't working uh, when we started out. You could put a disc in it and after perhaps uh, one in five attempts you'd get up the actual disc um, icon, but when you tried to actually load anything off it, it'd just come up with a disc error. Well, it's just booted off that one, so I think I think it just did honestly just need a, a quick head clean. Um, I'll shut this down for now. Um, in fact, let's eject the disk. And we'll just have a go with. Um, with a disc with a game on it. Now we've got to restart the computer. This is an early um, disc game. Ooh, let's reach around there. And um, they were actually designed to basically got the system files on the game. So um, you literally just stick the game in like you would with an Amiga and it boots up. You don't need a hard drive or anything for these yeah. early. <laughs> These early Mac games.
that seems to work no I don't want to um, continue because last time I played I was awful well, there we go this is Mac Golf I do like my golf games. Um, I've not got very far playing this yet. I've um, not even managed to complete one green yet, but I will. Um, I will spend some time playing with it a little bit more. But at least that proves you know the disc drive now is definitely functional, and that's the disc drive that wasn't reading at all um, last time. So uh, what we will do? Let's just get out of this uh, quick mat golf. I'm sure you want to quit map golf. Okay. Well, eject that disc. And we'll shut down the Mac. And we'll just power off for a second. And we'll try the other um, we'll try the other floppy drive. So that's been a success. Um, the drive that didn't read um, discs before is now, uh, well, didn't actually fully read a disc before, is now actually reading discs. And obviously we've booted um, the OS and the game off it, so I think I'm quite happy to say that's working. Let's get the, uh, let's get the flop hit. Come on, out you come. Let's get that one out of there so we can put that in the good pile. And then we've got the floppy drive that I'm actually going to um, use in this um, in this Mac. So this was the earlier one, but um, this one always has red. Um, red. And this is the one that is uh, basically it's from the computer that this main board came from. We'll get that in place, and we'll just make sure that this does still um, still work. Get it on the side there. That's locked in place. I'm not going to bother screwing it in yet for the fact that we haven't figured out quite what. Uh... Oh, sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, battery went. Anyway, let's carry on. So I've got my, I've got a um, the Mac Golf game here. Let us give this drive a try to we'll switch on. We'll let this boot up. come up with its disc icon. Presume you have to wait for that to come up. You can't just stick a disc in at this time. I'm not sure actually. Right. Put the thing. Let's try it. A happy Mac. There we go. So that seems to be both drives are now um, four. Um, that seems that both drives are now working okay. So I think with that um, that second drive, it was like I say, it was just a little bit of uh, muck on the heads. They did, really didn't look that dirty, to be um, totally honest. They didn't look bad at all, but um, obviously there must be a little bit of muck or something, or it was a little bit of high uh, dry grease on that um, worm drive. Um, that we cleaned off and um, added some fresh grease. It was either of them because we've not really done anything else to it. And um, it now, it, you know, I said um, that seemed to read fine. Uh, this one, like I said, was reading anyway. Um, I think it obviously you know, it was going to benefit from a quick clean of the heads and a um, a little bit of a re grease. But I, again, the same with the with the motherboard. It seemed to have a film of oil all the way over it. So I wonder if uh, that Mac was using like an industrial application or something. Um, and that's why it had a thin film of oil all over it. But it certainly seems to have protected, um, protected the mechanism and everything. 
Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. This was just a quick little uh, video on the uh, disk drives. Next, I think we're going to have a look. I promised I will do a little video on um, making the um, floppy drives and the floppy disks I'm using on this using the Bridge PC and OmniFlop. Um, but once we've done that, or either that or the hard drive, I'm going to do a video on um, sorting a hard drive out for this thing. And like I said, and we'll do that little video on um, the uh, Bridge PC and um, OmniFlop. And then I think we should basically, uh, apart from obviously a few cosmetics, getting some of the um, marks and um, stickers off it and things, I think we'll pretty much have a nice little uh, Macintosh classic to um, add to the collection. And we can possibly move on to some of the other um, Apple-related um, um, goodies that I've got. But we might have a little bit of a break and um, play with something non-Apple-related uh, before then, anyway. But we'll get this classic. Uh, we'll get this classic finished, um, and then this can um, go into the collection. So I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this little um, update. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.